Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show, and it's no surprise the housing market is in a terrible situation. Inventory is at record lows, prices are at record highs, it's unaffordable for the vast majority of people. To buy the average house, by the way, you now need an income of $115,000 a year, which for a lot of people just isn't doable. But thankfully, we have this video, okay? It's a solution to the housing problem that's probably not what you expect. In fact, you could probably save a lot of money by maybe doing this. So with that said, I wanna cover exactly what this is. As soon as you hit the like button and subscribe, because that, that's it. Just hit the like button, subscribe. And now with that said, let's begin. Okay, so this is all over the news. Affordable housing is a huge problem in America, but it's even more serious than I thought. According to a study by the National Low Income Housing Coalition, the hourly wage needed for a one bedroom rental is at least three times the federal minimum wage. Here's the thing, okay? When it comes to building affordable housing, there's a few things going on. Number one is the cost of development. The cost of development is really high. And so if you have a well-populated area, within those areas, there's gonna be pockets where you're able to develop then of those pockets, it's gonna cost a lot of money to actually build a new construction. So when you actually get done with the project, the rents have to be like two grand a month at the minimum, just to be financially viable. If they do any less than that, they're losing money, so they're not gonna do that. The second thing is that when you build a construction like this, zoning has a lot to do with how much cost is gonna go into the project. For instance, you can't just go and build this like block of units, each like 300 square feet from you know story ground level to you know 30 stories in the air. You just can't do that. You need uh, common areas, you need airspace, you need green areas, you, you need all these other things that go into the price of a project. Parking is, is another big one. So for every unit you have, you usually need about two parking spaces. Well, when you factor that in, all of a sudden, you know what looks to you as like a you know 400 square foot place. Now it's 400 square feet plus another 200 square feet of parking that has to be added on top of it. It's, it's very expensive. And so if zoning loosens up, you could probably bring down the cost by half, but then you're left with uh, basically what'll look probably like a prison. In my mind, the solution to this, and I've, I've said this for years, it's micro apartments. This is something I would have loved to have lived in. Just think of it, just think about it for a second, okay? Imagine a micro apartment that you could rent for 800 bucks a month. And let's just assume it's 350 square feet. It's big enough to be, you know, the size of a garage, but you're in a great location. You got a little kitchen in there. You got a bathroom. Uh, you know, maybe you have a nice view overlooking the city. You have space to watch TV, eat dinner. It's just a place that you could come crash at at night, have a few friends over for board games, and if you're gonna be out doing stuff or working anyway, why pay for the space when you don't need it? We have so much wasted space in America, let's cut that, let's stop that. But you know what, zoning says that'll never happen because it's too dense, it doesn't have the parking requirements, so can't do it. I think there's only one way to approach the problem, and, and for us, that is one room at a time. His tech startup is currently operating in 10 states and claims to be able to market rooms for half the cost to renters while also increasing profits for landlords. Here's the thing, I don't want, like if I'm a landlord, I don't want people going in week by week. It's just like the, the wear and tear that you get from something like that. It's too big to want to risk it. And then you also have to risk vetting a tenant like every week or like every month. That sounds like a nightmare. Unless you're doing like an Airbnb type situation, I think if there was an easier way to rent out bedrooms in a house, you know, let's just say you have a three bedroom house, you use two of the bedrooms, you have a spare bedroom, uh, have a property manager to go rent that bedroom for you, but to manage like the tenant themselves, the payments, all that sort of stuff. But it might be kind of awkward because the tenant's gonna be seeing you all the time and you're sharing your space. So maybe if there's like a easier way to do that. And that's how I met Reggie, a full-time student working hard to make it on his own. He rents his room for $640 a month, way below the average in Atlanta. It's called Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. There's so many people putting up their rooms for rent on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. Just look there, room for rent. You could find rooms for so cheap. Instead of going and like splitting a whole house with roommates and splitting it equally, just get the bedroom and you get the rest of the house pretty much for free included. Anyway, just to share it. If you vibe well with the person, come on. It's a great way to save money. They don't call it Hotlanta for no reason. 
<laughs> What's your hustle like in Atlanta? Like, how are you making it out here? I'm always busy working or school or getting into modeling, acting, and, and it, it broke me in really quick. It was like, okay, yeah, this is, this is life. But he's wearing an H&M shirt. Because a while ago, I bought like the same shirt, never ended up wearing it. I don't think I'd get away with the, the polka dots. You know, I can't pull that off. I could pull off dark, solid colors, but as soon as I try to get a little adventurous, try to get something a little trendy, it just doesn't, does not look good on me. There's people out here that get two, three, four jobs. Really? It's hard if, you, if you're only making 725 in Atlanta. Yeah, you can also tell it's H&M because the fit is like terrible. This is H&M too. This is a shirt, H&M shirt that I've had probably seven years. And you could tell like the, the shoulders kind of bunch up for whatever reason. It's not the best quality, but you know what? For like, this is a $5 shirt that I've had for seven years. So the cost per year of wearing the shirt has got to be like 80 cents a year for a shirt. Fantastic. If, if you're wondering why the government has not been able to solve this problem, one thing that you must understand is how zoning impacts the availability of that housing supply. See, what did I tell you? It's zoning. Now, here's the thing. I uh, see both sides of the perspective because I'm a real estate investor. I've never done development before, but I like to buy multifamily properties. And uh, I also have single family properties. I understand that if you buy a single family home in a nice quiet neighborhood, you don't want your neighbor tearing down and then building an eight story you know, apartment complex next to you. I understand that. I also understand that there needs to be more housing in certain areas. So to me, it seems like what the city's going for, what a lot of cities are going for is if you're within a certain distance from like a major street or a freeway, or certain like intersections where you, like you have a high density population, you can build, uh, you know, more than four stories if you're within a half a mile of that. And that way, you still kind of keep the rest of the city intact. If you're, you know, like the single story live in, you bought a house there 20 years ago. You know, okay, fine, you get to keep that. People buy into certain areas; they they want the areas to stay the same. But if you're near, you know, something of higher density then maybe it makes sense. We have so much housing that goes wasted and unused every single day. And the question is, how do we repurpose some of those empty bedrooms that sit empty, millions of them every single night, and just put people in those rooms? The problem is that a lot of homeowners don't want strangers going into their house and like shifting out week by week and then becoming like a hotel owner. They don't want that. The risk, getting a bad person, you get someone who comes in there. Uh, I've heard horror stories, by the way, for people who did Airbnb. Like, you could say, no guests, no smoking, no pets. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's what they say. And then all of a sudden, like 2 o'clock in the morning, you're like, what's that smell? It goes down there, smoking. Who's there? Oh, why are there five people here? Uh, you know, all these different guests. Why is there a dog? And it's like... Unfortunately, not everyone wants to play by the rules. And, and that's, you know, a few bad apples tend to ruin it for a lot of people. While bringing the convenience of popular vacation rental apps to the affordable housing market does sound like an innovation, there are other websites out there that'll rent you a room. So... What makes PadSplit so different for people of low income? Is this an advertisement? Why does this seem so much like an ad? Uh, it's probably not. See, I've done videos like this where people must watch it and think, oh, you're just advertising. Why are you just doing a pay? Like I did Boxable, never got paid for Boxable. I reached out to them because I just thought it was a cool concept. All of my undercover millionaire videos, by the way, where I go and you know talk about like, like a business, where they go and wash windows, wash cars, like they don't pay anything. Like I'm the one doing outreach for them. And if anything, like a lot of them are like, yo, I would prefer not to be on camera. So most people turn me down. But uh, you know what, maybe this is just a, uh, you know, when someone has a good idea, it's a shame we always just think, ah, oh, it's an ad. But uh, yeah, in this case, it does not look like an ad. There's no credit check. There's no upfront deposit. 89% of our members report saving relative to whatever they were doing before. And that average savings is $330 a month. How on earth do they do that with no d deposit and no credit check? Who's, how? How do you vet people? How do you make sure you're not getting someone who's coming in there and uh, you know, automatically you're gonna start like moving all their stuff in and then never pay after that. It seems risky to me. But we've all run across horror stories online about cheap apartments. So I wanted to see for myself what $640 a month will really get you in Atlanta. So here's the thing, I'm not so worried about the price, I'm worried about the tenant who's going in. You know, I spend so long on, uh, well not, not so much anymore. I got a property manager, uh, 
But, well, you know what, even with the property manager, I still do my own, like, you know, internet sleuthing to go and try to find, you know, what I can about potential tenants. But, uh, yeah, I had so many applications years ago where, where I would catch blatant lies. Like, they would write in their friend's information as, like, their landlord, so I didn't find their landlord. And then I'd go and Google the phone number and see, like, that doesn't belong to the name that's on the title of the property who's, who they're claiming owns the property. That's not the same person. And then when I could find that person and reach out, that person tells me, oh, no, this person was terrible. They did this. They did that. I definitely wouldn't rent to them. Yeah, they're, they're lying. It's so common, unfortunately. That's what I'm more worried about. I bet these places are fantastic that they're renting. That brings us back to Reggie, who's been renting his pad split for over a year. Oh, and by the way, I just want to point this out there, that when I'm going and searching up for like property owner's information, you would be surprised how easy it is to find. Because a lot of this is public record. So if you find an address of a house, you could literally just look up the address of a house look up the public record, see who owns it, and then once you get that name, you could find out exactly what else they own and all their details. So if you're interested, if you own a property or you're thinking about owning a property and you wanna do something like this, put the property into a trust. This is something that I wish I had done when I first started buying properties. It's incredibly easy to do. Even if you already own a house right now, you could put a property into a trust in, in minutes. So if you're interested in doing something like that, I've invested in this company. It's called getdynasty.com. And what they do is they allow you to set up a trust in a few minutes. They even have a free option, by the way. So even if you don't wanna pay them, but you still wanna set up the trust, it, it's free. It's totally free. And so I've invested in them as a company because I just really like what they're doing. And if you have a house, uh, you wanna put it into a trust, check out getdynasty.com slash gram and use the code gram at checkout and you will get 10% off of your order. And it's under a hundred bucks, by the way. So like if you want them to do everything for you, like it's pretty inexpensive for everything that goes into it, for everything that they do, and it's so simple. You could hide your information on a property. There's also a whole bunch of uh, other benefits of putting your property in a trust, and there could also potentially be some uh, tax benefits to doing so, depending on how the trust is uh, structured. So again, if you're interested in that, the link is down below. Just use the code GRAM, uh, and you'll get 10% off. So enjoy that, and we'll get back to the video. So next, I caught up with Reggie's host, Jean. He actually lived in a pad split as a renter for a few years before buying his own property, which he converted into five separate rooms to be rented. Okay, so I just want to mention this. A lot of landlords could benefit from this, or even homeowners, okay? I'm sure it would be very profitable if you want to put in the work to go and buy a property. Let's just say you buy a property with five bedrooms and it's, you know, $400,000. If that house could have rented out for three grand a month, if you rent out each of the bedrooms for, let's just say, $800 a month, all of a sudden now you can make a little bit more by renting out each bedroom separately. Now, the downside to that is that it's a lot of work. You have to make sure all the tenants get along with each other. You're gonna be dealing with some personal disputes and some drama, most likely. But if you could pull it off, hey, you might be able to get uh, you know $1,000 a room. And instead of getting $3,000 a month, you might be able to get $45,000 or $5,000 a month. You're also gonna have higher turnover, so probably higher expenses. But in certain situations, I bet it, it would be worth it to rent by the room instead. The exact same layout, exact same square footage. They bought and renovated that house in 2022, and last I saw, they were trying to get 1,900 bucks a month in rent. Whereas with this property, if it's full, I'm collecting a little bit more than twice that. Wow. Yeah, but like I said, you gotta make sure you get along with the tenants higher turnover, and making sure the tenants all get along with each other. I've heard horror stories of tenants who just get at it. And I'm talking like stupid stuff of like, they're gonna have some food in the refrigerator and one of the roommates like ate the food. And then it turns into a whole on like, you know, violence dispute where the police are called. Or like, you know, I heard another story uh, of the tenant, I think who like set their bedroom on fire because they were just kind of like out to lunch a little bit and uh, like risk burning down like half the house and like endangering some of the other. It's like wild stuff. But like if you vet them properly, which I don't know how you could do without like credit checks and like back, you know, all that sort of stuff, then it could be profitable. But you know, with risk comes reward. So with all that money, it's gotta come with a little more work or, and risk. You have new challenges every single day and some of which seem absolutely insurmountable, but the only way to approach them is, is by taking it one room at a time. All right, so I will say, is it a solution? Eh, not really. It's a solution if, you know, you're probably single. If you're in a city that you want a cheap rent on, 
That's fine. You could get the same thing though through Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Long term, housing prices are still high. This is helping people save more money, so I think it's a net benefit. But is it gonna solve anything? Probably not on a big scale. What's probably gonna solve this in reality is loosening up zoning and allowing smaller micro units. I think, I would love to, like my dream one day, if I could do anything, would be building like a large apartment complex of micro units. Like 350 square foot, just single units that you could stack, and it's just the unit. Like it's just meant for people who maybe walk to work, take a bus, take a bike, something like that. Maybe take one of those Lime scooters. They don't need a car, you know, no parking, no nothing. It's just, it's just if you want a place to come and crash, like a hotel room almost, except all your stuff is there. It's a little bigger, it's a little nicer. Like that's what I would love to do. I think everyone wins, because that's something I, like I wish, let's just say I was like 21 years old, and you know, I wanna save money, I just wanna spend like 800 bucks a month, but I wanna live in a nice area, like, my gosh, for 350 square feet, I wouldn't care, I'd do it. Cause I'm just stoked to have my own place. So that's what I would like. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And uh, in the off chance there is like a developer who's watching this in a big city and you understand zoning and uh, maybe we could do something like that. I don't know, I'd invest in a project like that. I think it would be an uphill battle. I think realistically getting that approved by the city is gonna be impossible. But hey, you know what? Could be worth it. So let me know, and uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, hit the like button, subscribe. Hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks.